So I made $724 from SPY today with $540 in my account. And here's what I did. I bought four put option contracts at $1.35 at 9.45 a.m. I sold two here at 1.27 p.m. and closed my position by selling the final two at 1.30 p.m. Now in this video, I will explain my thought process and tips on how you can do the same. The day prior, SPY was mostly consolidating after a two-point range after a massive announcement from Powell leading to SPY breaking into all-time highs two days in a row. Now this is considered a consolidation as a two-point range is well below average daily range of 3.9 in SPY. This is also one reason why day trading SPY can be exciting and lucrative. Now SPY closed at 466.88 the night before and gapped up, opening at more than one point higher at 468.01 pre-market. And just before the market opened, it was as high as 469. Now why does this matter? Well, pre-market prices are not indicative of how the market will open. The volumes are just not significant enough. But any form of information is useful to help us build our trading model for the day. Now in my mind, I was aware that on a Friday, where weekly options were expiring and traders are keen to take profits before wrapping up the week, especially after such a bullish week. So I was expecting selling pressure today. I just needed to know when to enter the market. And with pre-market rising up by two points, I knew there will be massive selling and buying volume in the first five minutes. Sellers to take profits off on an all-time high and buyers who did not manage to fill their orders are going to fill their orders when market opens. And as I mentioned, I was expecting selling pressure today and I knew institutional investors will be laying traps for retail investors in such a bullish market by pushing the prices up before a massive sell-off. So I was expecting a further rise in price. And the market opens. And as expected, the first five minutes had strong selling and buying pressure. The buyers eventually took control, and I was still wary of institutional investor traps. This could be seen in my stop loss strategy later. The first weakness was seen at 470.30 levels, and I decided to enter the trade with a 470 put, expiring in two days, at $1.35 per option. I bought four contracts, a total of $540. I am day trading, which means that I must close my position within the day. Theta, or time decay, does not affect me. So I can purchase expiring options at a lower price. Now with this strategy, always buy in the money options to retain the intrinsic value. Uh, when the options are in the money, the delta should be between 0.45 to 0.6. I will be very grateful if you could help like this video and subscribing if the information has helped you thus far. It is very unlikely for a trader to be buying or selling at the absolute highs or lows. So a good stop loss strategy must be in place to protect your trade from loss profits or massive losses. The main determinant of my stop loss would be my risk to reward ratio and key levels in the charts. Now at this price range, SPY had no prior precedence, no key levels, no demand and supply zones, and very little information together. The only key levels I had were the pre-market open and prior day close. Nothing else to assist me in my stop loss. Now these indicators are more for profit taking, which will be relevant later. So according to my contextual insights, I supposed that the institutional investors would be driving the prices up as a trap for retail investors before their sell-off. And at a 
point devoid of levels. Round numbers can become a level that institutional investors use. And why? Because round numbers are comfortable numbers to look at, especially for retail investors. And institutional investors know this and use it to their advantage. Therefore, I set my stop loss above the round number of 471. And I put my stop loss at 471.29. So even if the institutional investors raised the price above 471 to stop out the retail investors, I will still be in the trade. My risk is approximately $50 per contract, given a 0.5 delta. Now at this point, you will have to be quick in your estimations as time is of the essence. And this is why I select 0.5 delta in the money, uh, partly for easier calculation. My risk reward ratio has to be minimally 1.5x on a less conservative day and 2x on a conservative day. I've made enough profits this week so I'm slightly less conservative today given the lack of key levels. My expectations were to close my positions at the three known levels, the pre-market open, yesterday's after hours close, and prior day close. Now other levels may appear during the trading day, particularly support and resistance levels or other price action models. Set some alerts to return to the chart to monitor and make necessary adjustments. So after you have entered the trade, manage your stop loss and set your alerts. The next thing you need to do is to manage your emotions and stick to your game plan. Now your game plan must also consist of the fluidity to adjust to what the market communicates to you. Now it means no ego, no baggage and no attachments to profit or loss. Here's a quick tip. Don't look at your portfolio PL when trading. Firstly, they are unrealized gains, so it means nothing if they are positive or negative. The only thing it does to you is to affect your emotions. Focus on the stop loss, the alerts, and subscribe to news related to the markets for breaking news that may affect the trades and also price action. Now, entering the trade is only half the battle. What seals the deal is exiting the trade at the right time. In part 2 of my video, the market went against me and I was at the $70 loss at one point. I watched the video to understand my thought process and how I coped with it and went on to make $540 profit at the end of the day with the same trade. If my content has helped you, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. You can also support me at my Patreon. I produce such analysis and charts for my supporters daily before trading starts at 9.15 a.m. The link is in the description. Thank you and see you in part two.